Good girl. What a good dog you are. Come here. Right here. I'm a sculptor because it, um, it works well with the way I want to live my life. And that means on a spiritual, uh, spiritual aspect, uh, it means in terms of a cultural aspect, and it also works in, in terms of uh, the things that I really like to do. The thing that I really like to do is the same thing that Michelangelo talked about when he talked about sculpture and that sculpture is the science of the bump in the hollow. So I really love the bump in the hollow and that's why I'm a sculptor. For me, a sculpture really starts um, with my history as a sculptor. So everything that I've done in the past will lead me to the, to the sculpture that I'm doing now. All of the clues, all of the things went right, what went wrong in the last sculpture in my history should come out in the piece I'm doing. And often I'll start a specific piece by doing a drawing. After the uh, sketch is done, I will just take that drawing and the sculpture will move along uh, as, it, as it progresses. When I do sculpture, primarily I, I will work, if I'm working in bronze, I'll work in plaster. The plaster is uh, a, a material that I really like to work with because it's very versatile. It gives me certain textures that I can't get with any other medium at all. And those are textures that I like and often people will find my sort of trademark broken edge, lots of juxtaposition of textures, and plaster is what gives me that. We'll do better. Follow me, the wine's over here. Well, I'll lead the way. <laughs> in 2003, I put a project together called the Okanagan Thompson International Sculpture Symposium. Uh, it was a, an enormous project, and we put 20 pieces of uh, monumental sculpture in eight communities up and down the Okanagan Valley. Jock has got a talent all to his own. He can lend his hand to whatever art he wants to make. When you look at his art, you see a lot of things. The uh, three children of peace that he made, you know, interpreted children of three different nationalities just fantastically well. Often you'll find public art landmarking a, a place in the community, but even more important, I think that public art gives a community true heart. It's a way that the public can identify with the cultural and social side of itself. Arts uh, is the soul of a community and the nation, and without it, uh, I think a community wouldn't be an exciting place to, to be. Sculpture is often about scale. And as a sculptor, the ability to work on scale is really important. In Vietnam, I worked on the largest piece I've done so far, a 32 metric ton stone sculpture called uh, Your Thoughts Can Set You Free. This piece was really interesting because it was a balancing piece. There were no pins in this. It was all held together by gravity and mortise and tenon joints. When I was in Vietnam, I think one of the things that was very important was the resonance that the Buddhist people had with my own Buddhist practice. I think that a person's spiritual practice should follow their creativity. 
My partner Carmen and I have been practicing Buddhism for quite a long time, many years as a matter of fact, and it's really great to have somebody who you're so intimate with to have that same spiritual journey with. The last sculpture that I did, a commission sculpture, was for the Kelowna Buddhist Temple, and it was a figure of Shinran, who was one of their founding members. The interesting thing about the commission was that although they commissioned me to do this, at the time they didn't know I was a Buddhist. So there was actually quite a bit of uh, backslapping and celebration when we found out that a local Buddhist had made the local Buddhist sculpture. The symposium's been really interesting from a sculptor's viewpoint. The sandstone that was in this quarry that we're working in right now was a sandstone that was used to build Prague. So historically, and from an artistic point of view, there's a, there's a really great sense of history working at this particular site. My piece is very loosely based on a Tlingit Indian rattle. And what's always fascinated me is the particular form that's used in it. The rattle is um, uh, a main piece with figurative pieces carved on the top. One of the main figurative pieces has a long tongue that extends out of his mouth and en enters the mouth of another figure on the rattle. And the form itself, not necessarily the meaning, but the actual form itself has always fascinated me. An artist's work is never done because the artist will never reach perfection. My passion for the arts is something that's motivated me all my life. I know that I'll never be able to reach where I want to go. Come on, Tashi. But I'm passionate about my desire to try to get there. I'll be back tomorrow in my studio and I'll carry on looking for that ultimate expression of myself in sculpture. <laughs>